Hi, how are you going? Um, my name is Pip Edwards. Now, today we're covering directing actors, okay? Now, this is a big area. Actors train for years to make it look effortless, to make it look easy, but it's actually quite a process. So, what I really want you to do is to write your questions down as you go or journal a few questions you have now and really make use of the question and answer time at the end. But today, what would I like to cover? Well, let's look at how we evaluate what great acting is, okay? And let us evaluate what living truthfully in imagined circumstances is. That is what acting is, living truthfully in imagined circumstances. Listening, reacting, experiencing a slice of life, yeah? An actor wants to trust you, to trust you to let go and listen and react and play and interact with each other, to really commit, to be brave, to be bold, to make choices coming from motive, yeah? An actor wants to be able to do that. And if, if they can really trust you to evaluate their performance, to know when to say print, then they will start to allow themselves. They won't have that little voice in their head judging themselves. They'll allow themselves to be free and react, yeah? React and interact. They will go bolder. They'll probably give you a better performance, okay? Now, that brings me to a quite an important point. What is the difference between acting and directing? Directing, serving the story. Acting, as I said before, living truthfully in imagined circumstances. Now, today, what would I like to do? Firstly, I want to look at how we evaluate performance, yeah? Looking at what good acting is, what we're watching out for. Yeah, this will help us know when to say print. Then after that, I just want to have a little bit of a look at that first rehearsal you might have. Now, before that first rehearsal, I do believe that it's a good idea to do your own analysis of each character as if you are playing that character, but then you've got to rip it up before you get to that first rehearsal because you have to give, you have to give the story, give the character ownership over to the actor. Now, to explore what acting is, I've got Michael and Aisha here, and I'm going to get Aisha just to ask Michael a question. Now, this is a truthful question. Yeah, a truthful question, because it's going to help us explore what truthful human behaviour is, what living truthfully in imagined circumstances is. Now, I use this a lot, yeah. I, I suggest that this can also be a tool that you use uh, in rehearsal, but as the characters, that's quite beneficial of actually almost hot-seating the character. And I actually also suggest directors, please do this yourself on camera, okay? A lot of the time I find when I'm teaching directing is that directors get a little hesitant about going in front of the camera because it feels vulnerable. Guess what? Actors feel vulnerable. And that's something to remember. It's a very, very important point. Yeah, that can lead us into things like um, if you're uh, making sure that your set is not too jokey jokey and, and you're yelling direction over everything. Okay, being mindful that actors actually do feel that vulnerability as you're working and they're not props to actually speak to them as humans who are actually giving part of themselves, okay? Now, what are we looking for in this exercise? We're looking for what I call uh, POPE, yeah? POPE stands for People, Objects, Places, Events. People, Objects, Places, Events. So, any time that Michael refers to a person, object, place or event, you'll see that we see in pictures, yeah, we see in pictures. You actually have an image in your head. It's not text. We don't see in words. We see in pictures. And not just a picture, not just like a movie picture, but a picture with a point of view. Like if I say to you now, uh, donut, yes, you will picture a donut, chances are, yeah, and you will also have an emotional point of view of that donut. Same if I say uh, grandma, yeah? I, I all of a sudden go to my, you know, grandma, I remember when I was a little kid who passed away when I was quite young and I, and I have that image quite vividly in my head, yeah? And we need to make sure that we connect with our characters in that way. So making sure that um, when we're asking questions in rehearsal that we allow our actors and we double check that our actors are connecting that way. So we're looking for people, objects, places, events and Michael's emotional point of view of them. The other things that we're looking for is the connection between these actors, yeah? The, the connection between them. Um, uh, we're looking for the 
acting is reacting. Yeah? We want, we want them to be out of themselves and into the other person. This also goes a little bit into our objective or what we, our goal in the scene. The, the actors may not be conscious of that, but it will go, we will go a little bit into um, objective. It might be that Michael's objective might be, you know, to understand me, to see my story. We'll have a little bit, a little bit of a look at that. So um, we're going to move now into the exercise. I personally prefer always to look at the monitor. I think there's things that the camera picks up that you don't always see in real life, yeah? So just to remind you now, I'm looking for Pope, yes, people, objects, places, events, and the actor's emotional point of view, their emotional re relationship, what they see in their mind's eye of that thing. I'm looking for the actors, the energy between the actors, they're connecting, listening, reacting, moment to moment, existing with each other, uh, acting and reacting, yeah? Um, I'm looking for Michael's mask and reveal and truth, yeah? So what's going on and when he feels vulnerable, the mask that comes on, which we probably, we may say, even if he doesn't talk about anything personal, yeah? <laughs> so um, I've got um, Aisha to have a look at uh, 36 questions that lead to love. It's on the internet, you'll find it everywhere, yeah? And just pick one of them. Michael doesn't know what it is. So let's see what happens. Off you go, Aisha. So what in your life are you the most grateful for? <laughs> yes. I go there. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, grateful. I'm grateful for my family. Um, I get to live at home rent-free, uh, mm -hmm. I get <laughs> fed great Italian <laughs> meals, <laughs> um, so I'm very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. uh, grateful to be in Australia right now, because mm. it's, um, we're doing pretty well with all this craziness that's going on yeah. in the world. Um, um, yeah, I'm grateful to be here, um, talking to talking to camera and <laughs> doing this masterclass. Yeah. Um, what about your family? Yeah. So, like, what specifically about your family and, like, how they, what sort of people they are? Well, it's, um, my family are people I can always talk to mm. if I have a problem with um, in my personal life or um, work life. I can always talk to them about anything. We always have great um banter <laughs> have lots of personal jokes and yeah yeah great 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 thanks guys thank you thank you now um so just looking at what we saw there i saw a great uh connection yeah a great connection between them um and then this is something i'm really fascinated with okay is just seeing how You'll, you'll notice that when an actor's not quite connecting with something, they'll listen like this, they'll eyeball listen, they'll eyeball and I'm listening, listening, see how hard I'm listening. Whereas what we saw then is an easeful, that's my word, easeful, because not easy, it's easeful, easeful listening, yeah? So listening and then kind of flickering off into the mind's eye as he saw his family, the change in him when he saw his family. Now, I did sense some nerves, yes? He was holding his... <laughs> breath a little bit sorry darling yeah, yeah it's quite vulnerable as yeah. i said it's quite vulnerable yeah but then from that we did see mask and reveal we saw him sort of go oh, oh, i don't know how much to give yeah which we may want yeah but i think that i would just get him to like play around just let go let go let go you know um l let go of needing to act or get it right we want to give the actor permission to fail it is so important. Let go, play, um, stuff it, you know, just go for it, fail. Um, commit to the circumstances and often you'll get something that doesn't have the actor too self-aware or holding back. Um, but aside from that, we definitely saw connection between them, inner objects, um, action and reaction and, and that sort of little laughter that comes up. Okay, let's just say we've, we've got our script, okay? We've done our analysis as, an, uh, as a director, yeah? And now we're going into our analysis as an actor. Now, just before, <laughs> so we're going into the first rehearsal, but before we do that, as I said before, I think it's really beneficial to do this work as if you are playing that character. It's going to help us understand that motive determines behaviour. 
motivation. Behavior, behavior it comes from a motivation. Therefore, it should uh, hinder us from actually giving result-orientated direction. I'm sure that's something you've heard before. Result-orientated direction. Walk here, cry. Say this lovingly. Yeah, all of this actually can make the actor uh, self-aware. Yeah, it doesn't serve the actor. Instead of saying, say this lovingly, it's like, what if you uh, want to uh, warm him? What if you want him to give you a hug? Chances are something lovingly or something similar, something, something interesting will actually come out. Yeah, now, so before we have the actors, let's go through what our process will be with the script. Yeah, firstly, the facts. We want to go through and understand the facts, and not just the facts of the script, but the facts from that character's point of view, as if we were that character, yeah? So from the character's point of view, the facts that we know, then we should be left with a bunch of questions. Now, with those questions, I do believe it's important to fill them out, okay? Make sure you make them up, make them up, yeah, given the evidence that you have, okay? So before we've got the uh, we've got the facts, then we go into uh, who, what, when, where, why, yeah? Your old five W's, your past year five, you who, what, when, <laughs> where, why, yeah? So who are you? What is your relationship? Being mindful of, um, I think it's about, it's more about who in terms of our physicalization and the external self. The internal, s the, the, the who as in, um, oh, this person personality is actually, it comes very much from inside, yeah? We, we often, if I were to say to you, who are you? You'd go, I don't know. Chances are you go, well, I am, um, I like films and I have a cat and that's not actually who you are. They're not the, uh, they're not the eyes that you see through, yeah? Does that make s sense, hopefully, <laughs> yeah? So, uh, so who are you and very, very important, what is the relationship? What is the relationship? What are each of your relationships that you have? So who are you, yeah? What is your relationship? Then where are you? And what is your relationship to that place, yeah? When is it? So plotting the character's journey, I think is quite important, yeah? Understanding what your moment before is, the moment before the scene starts. And all of this can be integrated into tools that we're using later. Yeah, so what is your moment before? What is the journey that you have, yeah? So who, where, uh, when, yeah? Now, what? Now, this is what we call our objective. Now, I don't always use that, that term. I don't love it. Sometimes it feels like your um, uh, objectives working in business. But at the <laughs> core, the idea is there. Yeah, so Stanislavski, he came with the term objective. So let's look at two forms of, of objective, super objective and scene objective. So super objective is like your objective throughout the whole script, okay? Um, good way to remember it is um, Superman, Superwoman, flying over the whole script, yes, yeah, super objective, okay? So that basically means your core drive. Now, great super objectives are ones that trigger our core human needs, you know, love, uh, security, uh, things that exist within you, uh, 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 zombie film, get, uh, free the zombies, yeah? <laughs> uh, get rid of, like, stay alive, yeah? Um, uh, power, okay? I actually suggest some great homework to do is look at some of your favourite films, go, okay, from that protagonist or even from, you know, an antagonist or from um, a smaller character, what, what are super objectives? What are core drives that they have that motivate them throughout the whole, the whole film, yeah? Whole TV show, whatever, yeah? then super objective, and then behind that we have a why, we have a motivation, yeah? And I would love if you start to evaluate your own life. Being an actor is being like a uh, psychologist in a way, an active psychologist. Actors really need to know themselves so they can know what it is to be human. Once you ha have a training as acting, there's almost this inability to uh, judge, judge people because it is your job. It is your job to empathize. It is your job to empathize with your character. Yeah, if you're a cat, you don't ever, even if you're playing Hitler, you never say, I am evil. Yeah, you justify it. You understand the motivation 
behind it, okay? So that is a, um, that's the super objective and the motivation behind it. And then you have the very, very important job of connecting to it. And that's where we go into something like an as if, right? Um, what is this like for me? It must trigger the actor and for you and your first reading, it must trigger you at a core human level. Yeah, and if it doesn't, find a way to make it trigger you. Yeah, so that's the super objective. Then the other form of objective I mentioned is scene objective, okay? People have different views on this. I be personally believe that we want to phrase it like this. My purpose in the conversation is to make the other person blah, blah, blah. Yeah, again, I think it's beneficial to actually um, do something that is more of a core universal drive. And it must, it must excite you. Getting the scene right is, <laughs> uh, if that is the focus, if the, if the focus is still getting the scene right as opposed to serve your need in the conversation, then you haven't found one that's strong enough. Yeah, y you need to play to win. Even if you're not forcing it, you need to play to win, okay? And again, after the scene objective, we have a motivation, we have a why. You have a motivation behind that. So I need you to respect me. I need you to um, give me a hug. I need you to um, feel my pain. I need you to... Uh, 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 Tell me it's going to be okay. Take the blame for what you did and why. Yeah, why is that? I need you to take the blame because otherwise that means that I'm guilty. Then maybe that why will then link to your super objective, uh, which is uh, to, to be powerful. And my fear, the motivation behind that is that I'm actually insecure and I am... Uh, I don't have a voice in this world, just say. So see how it's, you know, super, your scene objective is often because of your motivation behind the scene object objective, which is because of your super objective, which is often because of your motivation behind that, and then that is a really core human need, okay? On top of that, we're going to look for your pope, people, objects, places, events, the things that we explored in the exercise before. So looking for your internal imagery and your relationship to that and remembering the tools of things like as ifs, yeah, to connect with that, making sure we connect with that. Um, so, so your Pope and then at the end of it, just listening, reacting, um, that's what we'll focus on more in rehearsal. Okay, so we've done that ourselves. It's also quite a great, uh, it's quite beneficial in our script analysis is to look at a few possible objectives, okay? A few possible objectives. Um, again, we want to find, find it with the actor. So as I said before, we, after we do this, we pretty much tear it up, yeah? Yeah, because we want to find it again with the actor. But it, it's a good idea to prompt the actor, okay? So, and you've noticed as well, I haven't mentioned actions yet, also called tactics. This is something that many, many people cover very early on when they're saying directing actors. Um, I personally believe they are a wonderful tool, but they're perhaps more beneficial to when you're working on set. Yeah, so uh, we will do a little bit of an example of, of what they are later, but I personally don't believe that um, uh, tactics are all that important until you've done all of the connection all of the connection with the text, with each other, uh, with your, um, uh, w uh, with the the drives behind the characters. Yeah, the, the actions are the end of that. Okay, so great, we've done all that. Now we're into we've done the casting as well, and here we go, first first rehearsal. Yeah, so with all of that in mind, we've ripped up our own analysis and we're meeting our actors. So, hello, how are you going? Good. Good, 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 great. And so we've already had a bit of a conversation with them uh, in, in the casting. I've had a little chat to them one-on-one -on -one and we're all good and now they're meeting each other, yeah? And we're doing the first read, okay? Now, uh, firstly, I may say something about my relationship to the text, but I hopefully 
will not ramble about how I see it, okay? Because that can be quite off-putting, can't it? When it can be. Yes. 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 So I see this script should go like this and it should go like this and this is how I see this film. The actor's sitting there going, oh my God, I hope that I can actually yeah. play that. Mm. Yeah, I don't see that as actually playable. Yeah, mm. playable direction. So instead, we're going to surrender all of that and we're just going to discover it, okay? So those facts that we did that we did before... Yeah, the actor probably will have done their, that themselves. But to look at this script that we're using today, okay, which is um, a bit of an adaptation of something from the old uh, Offspring TV show, but we're going to imagine that it exists on its own. But I do want to give credit to good old Offspring. Yeah. Okay. So the facts that we know is we have Alice. Yeah, and uh, we have Chris. Okay. Now, they have a daughter. So all of this is in the script already. They um, have a daughter, a young daughter. We don't know how old, so we know that that is a question. Yeah, we're going to know all the questions we have. We have to make them up, okay? Mm. Uh, now, the story goes that Alice suddenly left, uh, you know, a year and a half ago. Yeah, just suddenly left. Michael, Chris got home, okay, got home. Uh, was picking Lucy, their daughter, up from preschool. Uh, got home and she'd gone leaving nothing but a note. Now, we don't know what is in the note, so it's really important for us to flesh out what was in that note. Now, okay, in with this, it's quite important for us to... Um, we don't have to just do it fact, okay? We don't have to do it fact, yeah? Because we don't actually know... These two actors might have a different idea of what is in the note, yeah? They might have a different idea, okay? Because remember, motivation determines behaviour. Aisha is going to, her goal is, and my, my goal in, in helping her here in rehearsal, is for her to empathise with her character, empathise with Alice, yeah? To, to feel that Alice did the right thing, okay? Michael's goal is to empathise with Chris, to see through Chris's eyes, to, to, under, uh, to believe that he is doing the right thing, just like in life, yeah? Therefore, the note might be different for each of the actors, yeah? Cause just whatever they need to live truthfully in imagined circumstances, in alignment with their character's point of view. Okay, um, so we know that she left a note. Okay, uh, uh, what else do we know? Um, finally, like this is something we do know, it, it was quite hard for Chris and Lucy. Yeah, um, but finally, there is some some stability in their lives. They've got a bit of a routine and a bit of bit of pattern. Yeah. Um, Okay, so in terms of, so they're the facts that we know. We have a few gaps in there that we're going to discuss, okay? Um, we know that uh, in the script, so now that was, that's some of the facts, yeah? There's a moment before as well, okay? There's a moment before, which is earlier today, what happened was Alice appeared out of nowhere, okay? And said, um, at, at Chris's work, we don't know where Chris works yet, so we've got to find that, yeah? Um, at Chris's work, and uh, he gave her a lift home, offered to give her a lift, not home, sorry, gave, get, offered to give her a lift to the hotel she was staying at. They had a conversation in the car, but not a lot was said. Okay, so we, we kind of need to also fill in what would be most beneficial for that car. Okay, they've pulled up. They're in Chris's car. They've pulled up outside the outside the hotel or motel. What are we doing? The the motel. Car. Motel. Yeah. Outside the motel. So that is in, in itself is a clue, isn't it? It's going to cost a little less. <laughs> yeah? Okay. So firstly, let's just... All we're going to do, the very, very first thing... Yeah? So the actor probably will have done all that fact stuff themselves. And then I will just simply say in this very first reading, this very first reading, reading, which is just about discovering it, all I'm watching for is are they listening and reacting to each other? Often we say, 
okay? I will always say, let's just read it. Let's just read it. I will always say that. It doesn't mean read like, I'm just going to read it, yeah, with nothing in it. It just means let's not make decisions yet, yeah? It means listen, react, um, hear each other, connect with each other, connect with the moment. I often allow my reads to go quite slowly, and if actors are hurrying and not listening, I just go, slow down, slow down. They go, well, I'm going to go slow. It's like, no, 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 just, just connect, just connect. That's all we're doing is discovering. We want to feel free to fail, permission to fail all the time. <laughs> yeah? Okay, so interior, car, day. Chris? parks outside the motel room that Alice is staying at. When you're ready. Thanks. For four. Dropping me back here. You, you don't have to thank me. Would you like to come in? Uh, not, I meant to talk, not. No. Um, you don't have to be suspicious. No, no. No. So what happens now? I don't know. You still smell the same. Alice? I want to see Lucy. No. Why not? Because you don't get to arrive out of nowhere and snap your fingers, Alice. I see. What do you want me to say? You want me to beg? No. Then what? You, you go away without... You, you can't just come back and expect everything to... That's, that's and not I'm not what going I'm to let you see Lucy. No way. Not, not until I know what's going on. Are you happy to see me? At all? Chris, Chris can't respond. After a moment, he reaches over and opens her car door. Okay, great guys, really, really good, really good. Now, um, something that I did just then, I say something after each take, okay? Whether this be rehearsal or filming. In, yes, filming particularly, because I think so much happens and we forget that the actors are right there. I, I was on a, <laughs> side note, I was on a, um, a shoot once as an actor and I was acting against someone who was um, hadn't done a lot before and I remember the, the director was wonderful absolutely wonderful but there was a lot of sound uh, you know like there was planes going over yeah um, and so we did a few takes and after each take I could see that the um, director and um, you know some of the crew were sort of going oh, and we all we could see was them sort of looking, oh, this is, this is difficult, this is difficult. Um, and because we couldn't hear them, after you do a performance as an actor, you, you go, oh my God, was, was that me? Was that me? And I could see this other actor really, who was quite um, green, just, just go, what did I do wrong? Because there was no note and we could see them going, uh, then the director, because the director was wonderful, I think he noticed that and he came over and goes, sorry guys, just we're getting some sound problems. Just mentioning that meant that the actors, the actor went, oh. yeah? Because the, the actor will think it's them, inevitably think it's them, yeah? And so it's great just to say something, yeah? So either, either great, 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 you know, <laughs> um, if, if that's just the process that you're after, yeah? Or... Give them notes. As I said before, actor, actor would actually love you to give them notes. They'll go further <laughs> if you do, if they can trust that you'll pull mm -hmm. them back, okay? So, so that was great. That was our, our first read. They were listening, reacting. Now, if we're looking at that performance, okay, good. I think sometimes they were listening to each other. Sometimes they had already imposed an idea of the script, mm -hmm. okay? And some moments got pushed and I think perhaps not as layered as we could make them. Yeah, simple scene, but I think it affords for a lo uh, allows for a lot of subtext. And so we started to go into a predictable, it was not bad, it was quite good, but it got a bit simple, yeah? So what do we wanna do, yeah? Firstly, we wanna make sure that the actors are really connecting with each other, yeah? And then also connecting with 
there. Who, what, when, where, why, just like we did before. Okay? So in terms of the given circumstances, right, we're in your car, okay? Uh, the moment before, what is what what has just happened? Let's talk about it. Where do you think you work? Um, like at a mechanic. At a mechanics. At a mechanic? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. And what's a day been like? Pretty slow. Um, just had to change someone's tyres or mm -hmm. the same old, same old. Mm -hmm. Someone came in with needed to change their oil. Okay. Okay. You'll notice as well that I use... I and you straight away. I don't say he. I don't call him, you know, uh, Chris. What does your character? I don't do that. I don't separate. I just straight away, and I like when actors do that as well because yeah. straight away they want to let's get them to own it as quickly as possible. Yeah. So you've been working at the mechanic, slowish day. What are you looking to do tonight? Oh, I'll spend time with my daughter. Yeah. Watch a movie. Yeah. Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, I think we've got this important question now. What has life been like since uh, since Alice left? Um, well, it would have been very difficult because what would I have... It would have been or it was? It, it was very difficult because I had to lie to my daughter to get her to understand what, what, where did her mum go, where did my wife go, so it was, that in itself was very hard, but to be abandoned like that with, um, in that way with that note, it was challenging, so it started out hurt and now I've built some resentment and bitterness but also still there's still that love there you still love her absolutely yeah yeah now this is leading to something very very important and this is one of our pope yes lucy the daughter this is very important i'm going to ask michael i am also going to ask aisha afterwards very similar questions okay it doesn't really matter if their answers are, like, are different. It really doesn't, yeah? Um, with Michael's answer of he works in a mechanic, great, 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 if that feels, if that feels natural to him. Um, I don't think, if we don't actually see his work, mm. yeah, it's not the end of the world for him just to use his own life. You know, it, it, it actually isn't. Yeah. Um, I actually think it's quite beneficial because you can connect with it almost straight away. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, like my, uh, mechanics, something I felt that he connected with that. So I'm watching the actor all the time and just going, do they connect? This is another reason why I think one of the best ways to learn to be a director of actors or an actor's director is to take acting classes because then, like um, Ilya Kazan, you know, quite famously, actually direct through empathising with the performance. I know that I absolutely do that as, you know, the, the way of directing is actually to feel the journey with the actor and then you can kind of impulsively or instinctively feel if they're connected or not, yeah? Um, okay, so, uh, okay, so let's go into your relationship with Alice. Now, there's all sorts of ways that we can do that. We can hot seat him or quiz him like we're doing now. There's other ways of connecting, and this is quite a, a beneficial way of um, getting our actors to connect with uh, a child. Yeah, is actually, if they don't have a child themselves, yeah, actually think, ab think about themselves as a child. Okay? So, Perhaps we go, should we go a little bit into an exercise? Yeah, so so both of you just letting go, letting go, taking a breath. Yeah, breathing, breathing, breathing. Breathe in, breathe out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just let go, let go, let go. And I just want you to take yourself back 
right back into seeing yourself as a child. Okay? See your little face. See that little face. Yeah, you might even get them to um, have a photo of themselves as a kid. Can be a really beneficial thing to bring. Yeah, see yourself as a child. See your little eyes, your little nose, your little mouth. See your hair. Think about your hopes <laughs> and dreams and what you wanted. Connect with that. And can you imagine now you're holding that little you on your lap? So you might just put your hands up and you've got that little you on your lap. You're seeing that little you. And can you now think about any way that you perhaps have betrayed that little you. Yeah, any decisions you've made that has that have gone against what you uh, you know what you wanted. Yeah. And if you had the chance again or if if you had your little you, if you got to look after your little you now, what would you want for them? Can you say out loud, uh, can you just, just whisper it, just whisper it, but um, I'll look after you. I'll look after you. I'll protect you. I'll protect, I'll protect you. you. I won't let anything happen to you. I won't let anything happen to you. Great, okay. Um, when you're ready, I'll just get you to open your eyes and I just want you to look at each other and I just want you to think about that little you and um, Aisha, you're going to say, I want to see Alice and Michael, you're going to say no and you're just going to process it. I want to see Alice. No. Just go over again, keep exploring that bit. I want to see Alice, just let yourself go. I want to see Alice. No. Remember what you're protecting. Yeah, she's dangerous to him. He's dangerous to her. It's it's about protecting, guaranteeing that little you has a future. I want to see Alice. No. Just keep going. Just let yourself be free. I want to see Alice. No. 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 All right, let's keep going with the script. Why not? Why not? You, because because you don't get to arrive out of nowhere and snap your fingers, Alice. I see. What do you want me to say? Do you want me to beg? No. And what? You go away. Just take your time, just talk to each other. You go away and without you can't just come back and expect everything That's to not just. That's what I'm trying to do. And I'm uh, not letting you f see Lucy. No way. Not until I know what's going on. Are you happy to see me? At all? Okay, great. Really, really well done, guys. Really well done. So, um, so what I what I saw then is particularly at the start, just going back back and forth with those lines, I saw them seeing a child in their mind's eye. 
towards the end of that, it did start to get a little actory again. Now, rehearsal, this rehearsal is not about how they say it, okay? Because some of the most, the, the, the most magical performances, they come out of the moment. They come when an actor surprises themselves. Selves, yeah? Yeah, when they actually, when they're, whatever tactic they play comes from a reaction, yeah? The goal of rehearsal is for, for us to get them to connect with their character, to connect with each other, connect with um, uh, their, their pope, yes, uh, connect with their given circumstances, connect with their objectives. So that can be a bit of a way because because that, that I stuffed up the character's name, because <laughs> Lucy, yeah. Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, because, oops, um, yeah, because they, uh, so uh, helping them connect with the child, yeah, it's vital for this scene to work, yeah, and we did see that at the start, and then they started getting a bit actory again, yeah, which I wouldn't tell them that, but <laughs> <laughs> in my head I'd just note, okay, we're not connecting with this bit now, yeah, but I did see them when they first, did you feel that? How did that feel? Yeah, it was very emotional, actually. Because, like, it's a child. Like, I don't have a child, but mm. something that I can connect with that I feel for. Mm. Like, I want to protect little me. Mm. So it was more about, like, it was like I was kind of begging him because mm. it was important to me to protect her. I need that from him. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Very That's emotional. Great. And that's good. <laughs> good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we could see that. We could see that. So it is... It is really vital that that we work to connect these connect these internal images and Michael how'd you feel I firstly wasn't connecting with mm -hmm. a younger version of myself yep. so I used my younger siblings as the great. substitute awesome and that worked for me great 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 and that's that's a that's another tool yeah so so they're all tools they're all tools and they may or may not work and uh, we, you know we just keep working uh, like with the actor and just trying things, trying things. This rehearsal is a safe place to try things, yeah. Okay, let's talk together about how did you meet? We met doing karaoke. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. We sang together. Yeah. That's how we met. In a group? <laughs> yes, I think. We were like there with separate groups and then um, he got up and then I got up as well because I thought he was really cute. Mm. And then we sang together and then he asked me if I wanted to go get a drink. Great. And you've been together for a while? Yeah. yeah. Five years. Yeah. And was her departure sudden? Like, were you expecting it? No. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. So, Aisha, let's talk about why you left. Now this, if it doesn't say, okay, we can combine uh, the uh, the actors, yeah. So so whatever Aisha feels is um, reasons that she could feel trapped, yeah, and plausible reasons why she may leave with the character's motivation. So uh, it's really important for me when I'm directing or coaching not to ask the actor to do anything that I wouldn't do, okay? What inevitably happens is a lot of my actors know all my secrets because, <laughs> <laughs> because I will often share information as a way of prompting them to think about their own lives because I'm not going to say, Aisha, what's your, you know, what is your insecurities? I'm not going to go and do that. Yeah, it's not my place, okay? But I do want her to think about that and connect with that, okay? So um, ways that personally, Pip, but you're going to have your own direction, directing style. The way that I do this is like, okay, so why, you know, why, why do you think you left? Now, um, depending on who Aisha is, I might use that analogy of, uh, uh, use that um, comparison with a reason that I would, le uh, would leave somewhere. So I might talk about, you know, how I feel feel trapped or I've even talked about past relationships sorry and <laughs> I shouldn't say that and then <laughs> uh, yeah and then uh, uh, you know um, yeah places where I've just felt like I've needed to go and get out of it you know get out of there um, um, things that 
frustrate me about being stuck, things that frustrate me about, um, I guess, wanting more and thinking there's more in life, reasons that I've just gone away. Yeah, and I will probably mention them to the actor to get them thinking. Then often what happens is the actor will share their version, but I'm not going to ask them to if they don't want to. Yeah, sometimes I go, yep, 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 I've got something. And I'm just going to continually read the actor and just go, okay, do I think they're connected or not? That's all that, I, d it, I don't need to know their secrets. Yeah, often they share them because this is a safe place and there's not all the crew around. Mm. Yeah, um, but uh, you don't need to. You just need to see if they have something that they're connected with. That's that's your role. So, so um, I guess you know I should. Uh, yeah, I guess you can either share why you know you might leave or like yeah, or talk about you know. Or connect to the frustrate the frustration of being into love. So, mm. I think a lot has to do with fear of confinement. Like marriage is quite a lifelong thing, and having a kid is very. Now we've got someone else that we have to look after together, and that frightened me a little mm. bit. Uh, also, I'm a little bit. I think I'm a little bit insecure because I feel like now. I've just signed off for the rest of my life and haven't done all of the things that I wanted to do maybe when I was little or I just feel like there's so much of life that I haven't explored yet and there's a guilt I think there's a guilt associated with that that I owe myself a little bit more than what than just living in this life for the rest of it I also think there would be some guilt and a little bit of frustration I feel like uh, Chris has put a lot of pressure on me perhaps that I am this great thing in his life and he's so happy and I don't know if I can be that you know there's a lot of pressure to live up to when someone is like you're you're amazing you're perfect mm. blah, blah. it's a lot of pressure that comes with that so I think it's all just building up and just for myself I just needed to leave do you know where you went <laughs> yes I think I went to a different country. I want to say England. It's where my family is from. Yeah. I think for me, like also me as a, like a person, um, there's a very personal connection to England. It would have been where I where I wanted to start, where I want, where I in my head life was it wasn't here. It was over there. Mm. So I think I went over there to find out more about what I was missing. And well, why did you come back? Because I wasn't missing anything. And I was missing these guys. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that thing where you, you think that life is always somewhere else and then you realise when you're there, it was there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great, great, great. So, great. Great, great. So, so we're establishing some of the given circumstances, filling in some of the facts. Obviously, we could talk about this for far longer. <laughs> yeah, and there's so much more. We barely, we barely touched the surface, to be honest. But that's just a few examples of the some of the investigations that we're that we're doing in there. Um, yeah. So, I guess from here, imagine we've done heaps more because we will have. Yeah. Let's go through and going, okay, so this is us establishing the facts and establishing what questions we are. We still we have, we still have an awful lot of questions, okay? But now we might actually go through and understand a bit more about your five W's and also our beats, okay? So our beats, right? Now, you, I know as directors, you will have done your beats, your director beats. I believe that an actor's beats are quite different from a director's beats, yeah? Um, this is not universal opinion, but I personally believe that an actor's beat, can, these two can have different beats, yeah? So what is a beat? It's a shift. It's a shift in the scene. Now, this is something really wonderful that an uh, acting coach called Anthony Mindell said, is that in life, I don't play the beats, the beats play me. I love it, <laughs> I love it, yeah? And so a beat shift in life, you might have an objective, but the beat shift happens to you, 
Yeah, you don't expect it. And therefore, that can help us get the magic of realizations and reactions and that wonderful stuff that, e um, that exists between you. Yeah, those, those moments, those moments, yeah. So why don't we go through and just actually read through and feel where the beat shifts are. And if you feel that you have different beat shifts for each of you, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. And then we're going to go through and understand what the objectives are, yeah, and, and go through and understand. We need to a little bit more about the relationship, the who, yeah, um, uh, the objectives and the motivation, yeah. So let's explore the beat shifts, okay. So firstly, we've got Chris Parks outside the motel room. That's pretty much one beat in itself, yeah. He's pulled up and he's parked, okay. Just Let's just go and read. So... That's that first beat. Mm -hmm. Thanks. For four. Dropping me back here. You don't have to thank me. Would you like to come in? No, I just meant to talk. I'm what do you reckon? Is there anything yeah, here? Yeah, that's a beat. It's kind of suggestive. But like in an awkward way. Awkward. I'm gonna catch. I'm gonna catch that. Yeah. So words like awkward, I don't think serve us. Sorry. Okay. I should. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Fine. That that also leads me to something else. Is at this point, please cross out any parentheses, anything like that. Yeah. There's there's stuff in here like a struggle for oh, him yes. yeah. and and lovingly. lovingly and all of that stuff. Cross it out. Cross it out. Cross it out. I would cross it out way back when I'm first looking at the script, yeah? I, I say to uh, actors that so often it's just there so you can read it quickly or producers can read it quickly, people can read it quickly, yeah? For if I'm reading a struggle for him as, I, as I'm as i saying my line, all of a sudden that's result-orientated yeah. direction right there in my script and I'm going, uh, 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 no, <laughs> yeah? I'm trying to act a struggle as opposed to living truthfully in imagined circumstances from the motivation, whatever we've decided, whatever he's decided his objective is, saying no from that motivation with that obstacle. Mm. Yeah? Chances are it will be a struggle. Yeah? Okay, so um, thanks for dropping me back here. Oh, you don't have to thank me. Then we've said beat. Yeah? Mm. Yeah? And then off we go. And then keep going. Mm -hmm. Would you like to come in? Uh, not. Do you think there's another one there? Yeah. 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 Not. I meant to talk. I'm not asking no, no. you to. You don't have to be suspicious. Don't I? So, what happens now? I don't know. You still smell the same? Alice. I want to see Lucy. Whoa, hello. <laughs> Beat. 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 Now, do you think there could still be one before you still smell the same? Hmm. Yeah. There's a shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as you can tell, they're they're smaller. They are smaller than um, than an actor uh, uh, than a director's beat. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay. Rather than continuing on, should we just leave it there? Yeah. The beat beat shifts there. So just having a sense of where the story moves. Yeah. Where those shifts are. Eventually, we can even do mini objectives per beat, or I, as a director, can write potential potential actions that I'm not even really telling them yet. Yet but explore potential actions per, per beat, okay? Now, so who, who are you talking, who are you talking to? So we've got to establish that there is love between them, mm. okay? Now there's 
a bunch of exercises that we can do for that. Believe it or not, one thing that we, <laughs> that we can do is actually just getting the actors to maintain eye contact for a while. Another great thing, this is from Miranda Har Harcourt and I love it, okay? Those 36 questions that lead to love that I mentioned before, actually this is something that she said, which I think is really pretty cool, of actually giving them the 36 questions, going off you go, go for a walk or go get a coffee or, you know, it, it depends if you want to leave them alone together or not. But, or, but uh, you know, I could, lis I could be somewhere where I can't hear them, yeah? And just get them to ask and answer those questions as each other. That can be a great way of creating chemistry between them. The other thing we can do is just allow them to have eye contact with each other. We're not going to do a whole two minutes, but we could do <laughs> two minutes. But just having a little moment where they're actually listening and reacting. There's other things if, you, if you know anything about your Meisner, you know, um, uh, your repetition technique, that can be used. But I'm simply going to say, let's just do, you know, maybe even on camera, maybe <laughs> 10 seconds is enough. But just... Letting go, breathing. I think both actors are not quite breathing. That's <laughs> one thing I want to do. So maybe just stand up and do a little like. Uh, uh, yep. Just making sure we're breathing. <laughs> good, 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 good. Just breathing, breathing, breathing. And then just come sit down, make sure we're breathing. Yep. Ah, and this is where I would say swear words, but we're just going to say, stuff it! Stuff, stuff it! Stuff it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever, play, laugh, whatever. Yeah, so we're letting go, we're letting go, because I'm noticing a bit of tension. Yep, and then... Yeah, and then we're just going to start to explore. Surrendering to the other person, so really looking into their eyes. Starting to investigate what colour eyes they have. Yeah. Engaged, really go deep into their eyes. And something you can be thinking, you don't have to say anything, but just connect with something of your own. Uh, you know, it might be a little bit of anxiety or worry or hu human human messiness, <laughs> and understand that that person knows that it's okay, and they understand it too, on a deep level, or that they get it. I'm really seeing them connecting now. So we're just going to do that first beat. Um, you can just call for line if you're not sure why. It starts with thanks. Thanks. Just reading each other, breathing. We'll just go again, just in your body, in your body, Aisha. Thanks. Just reading their mind. You don't have to thank me. Would you like to come in? No, um, just to talk. You don't have to be suspicious. Don't worry. No. Great. We'll just we'll just stop it there. But I saw a wonderful connection then, which was which was quite exciting. Okay. So we've got our connection to I'm going to get the name right this time to Lucy, and then we've got <laughs> the um, connection to each other which is we want to entwine all of this so the actors can really let go, okay? Now, so with these beats, we might go through and label them, yeah? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> label them as in from the actor's point of view. But remember, film is very visual, uh, so it's events, yeah? It's events of the story. It's not so much about the text, yeah? Um, sorry, everyone. Sorry, script writers. Um, but it's, it's a visual medium, yeah? yeah? Okay, so... Who, yeah, and we've, we've explored the who on quite a deep level. We've asked, we've done hot seats. The characters have done their own biographies, big, long bi biographies that we're not going to have time to do today. But then the most important thing is this energy between them, yeah? Um, okay, and, and your relationship. So we've decided there's love, but because of 
um, because the other person is dangerous to their daughter, okay, there's hesitation and fear. And I guess that's what we call one of the obstacles, yeah? Or both of them are obstacles. The fact that they love each other, they're soulmates, that's an obstacle, yeah? And it's a vital ingredient in the scene. And their love and their protec protection for their child is a vital part of the scene, okay? So we, let's let's say, yeah, we had time and we did a whole <laughs> lot of investigation about um, hot seating, about um, uh, who they are, yeah, their relationships, their people, objects, places, events, their emotional point of views of everything, their connection between them. Uh, a great tool as well is to do some improvisations. I love, I love, I love using an improvisation of the moment before, so improvisation of the car ride, then into the scene. I think speaking out the subtext of the scene is really beneficial, yeah? But uh, <laughs> let's just cut to a very one very, very important thing, is, and that is objectives and helping the actor explore objectives. So um, remember, even though I've done this work myself, there ain't no way I'm just thinking that your objective is this. I'm not going to do that, yeah? Because, like, I could say something and Aisha doesn't respond to it, doesn't hit her in the gut. All I'm looking for, it doesn't... Does it hit her in the gut? That's all I care about. Yeah? So, um, Aisha, what do you feel your purpose in a conversation is? I want... You need? I, want him, I need him to let me see my child. You need him to let you see a child. I think I also need him to forgive me for leaving. That's really important to me. Because there is that guilt there that I did leave. And I need him to Redemption. let me back in to his life, I think, is a really big deal. Redemption. Yeah. This is, um, what, she's, what she's giving is great. There is something in regards to let me see my child. Now, we have done some, a bit of surface level uh, connecting to who... Aisha's child could be mm. but I wonder whether as Aisha not a mother will connect with that like that okay and so if we take that in more of a universal term need my child need to this is where we might get we might sound a little bit of eph ephemeral here but your child why why do you have to why see your child do you mean like maybe phrasing it in a way or connecting it to myself more because I don't have I a child. I think so, yeah. So maybe something like I need to see my sibling or something like that. Mm, okay, so, um, okay, firstly, director's favourite question, why? Just continually <laughs> ask questions, continually ask questions, okay, yeah? Sure. And so remember, you're, you're, you're asking questions, you're looking at your actor and you're saying, you know, are they connecting, are they connecting? So... I mean, I, I wonder whether see my child, that, what's that about? Why, so, because you want, uh, maybe it's something about you, yeah? You want your family back, you want what? Yeah, well, my child is mine, like, came from me. And what does having your child with you mean to you? Contentment or security, like, knowing that I know that she's safe and she's with me. And I feel... And about you. What, and what about is it me. about you? Um, I feel safe, I think. I feel more whole. More whole than I do knowing that I have a child and being separated from them. I yeah. want them with me. Um, so him as well. And then what about him? Yeah, what do you need from him? I need love and forgiveness from him because he also I feel is part of me it's that family and I need it back I need to feel like I have that support and fulfillment as well I think for myself yeah I thought that I would find fulfillment somewhere else yeah. but now I know that I need it from him and my child yeah so I need my family back and I need you to give me my family back Okay. Yeah. So I need you to give me my family back. Why do you need your? F 
why do you need your family? So the, it's really important that Aisha connects with her why, okay? It's got to mean something to Aisha. It's got to mean something. So, so family, what is, what is that? Because uh, if, it, if it were me, Pip, so again, this is right where I go, like, you know, I, I might, I need my family because I'm, I feel alone without my family. Yeah. I, I'm scared for myself. I feel, um, you know, it's connecting with that 3 a.m. part of yourself that you're like, <laughs> oh my God, I can't sleep. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's that part of yourself. And I actually want, want the actor to connect with that part of us. Their fear, yeah? So, yeah, fear so of abandonment and fear of being lonely. I think I mm. feel very alone when I'm separated from them. Mm. I don't want to feel that. I saw the actor connect then, yeah. And I saw you were so brave. And this is where we keep acknowledging how vulnerable they are, yeah? Mm. How vulnerable. And that was so beautiful and you are so brave. Thank yeah? you. Yeah, so w what we did then, and yeah, and it's <laughs> extraordinary. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And just exploring how the actor goes, this is what it is, looking at it with their head and then going, why, 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 until they hit something that hits a truth, yeah? And if you don't mind, we're just gonna start the scene again from this place of, I need that protection, connection, care, from that place of vulnerability. Remember, we're not looking at how, we're just looking at the truth, don't rush, whenever you're ready. Thanks. You don't have to thank me. Would you like to come in? I'm I mean to talk, I don't No. You don't have to be suspicious. So what happens now? It was great. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut it there because I just noticed her tense up yes. a little bit. But that was beautiful. That was so beautiful. And the start particularly, I mean, that is one of the most exciting things of not letting the actor worry about how they're doing something, but actually seeing, yeah, the, this great thing. What, what I mean, what is great acting on camera? It's like it's like to the point of you know how your best friend can tell that something's wrong even if you don't <laughs> let yeah. them see it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's magic. Yeah, and just that start there of seeing Aisha play with that vulnerability and wanting to be strong and dealing be between, yeah, is is really really fascin fascinating. Of course we'd do the same with Michael, but we <laughs> don't have time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um so this is this idea of we we did basically go from scene objective, purpose, converse, purpose in the conversation, to ask why, then it, we led to that super objective and that's the part we felt I should go whoop and she connected with the truth, yeah? And then from there we speak that, okay? Now, um, you'll notice as well, I said when you're ready, I think this is a tool to take with you on set. Um, I'm not a big action person I guess unless you've got a really big set and you have to but uh, you know when you're ready I mean even not really saying anything if you can <laughs> if the actor just knows to flow into it it can really there's something about the word action often that makes an actor go Ugh. yeah we don't want this we want them just to keep playing permission to fail yeah now one thing I do want to cover okay and this is something that you probably know the very last thing is your transitive verbs or your actions or your tactics whatever you want to call it now I don't necessarily cover this in rehearsal. I think it's a great tool to have up your sleeve as a director, okay, because it's good shorthand on set. You don't want to go and rant on set. You don't want to rant about how you see it. It, it. An actor's quite, yes, vulnerable, a bit nervous, yeah? It requires a lot of concentration. It's quite exhausting. Yeah, this is the situation of on set. If you rant at them for a while, um, chances are they're just going to go, and they'll have a mind <laughs> blank, yeah? 
Okay, so let's just a little bit explore what actions are. So shall we pick a line? What line shall we pick? Um, would you like to come in? Mm. Would you like to try that one? Sure. Let's just say line to Michael, just speak to each other. Would you like to come in? Great. There's a line. Okay. But remember, it's about the other person. Okay? It's about the other person. Every nod that director gives is about the other person. It's not really about her. So let's do it to, what do you reckon? To, um, uh, 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 so odd, this won't make any sense. Um, to twist him. There we go. There we go. Okay. It's gonna, not going to make sense in the context. We're just playing. Mm. Would you like to come in? <laughs> I twist you. Would you like to come in? Good. Can you try it to uh, deflect him? Would you like to come in? Can you try it to uh, beg him? Would you like to come in? I think you can commit to these two persons. Yeah. Mm. Just be brave. Stop it. Yeah. Would you like to come in? Beg, beg, go for it. Please, please. Would you like to come in? Great, there we go. There was begging. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're going to try the hard one again because, you know, why not? Good way to end. Yeah? <laughs> can, you can you seduce him? Play. <laughs> I don't know how to seduce you. <laughs> <laughs> um. Order him. There we go. Order him. Mm. Would you like to come in? Try again. Order him. Would you like to come in? Good. So, good, good, good. Well done. Well <laughs> done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the deep in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, um, yeah. So, that's a bit of um, an example of what you can, a way that you can talk to actors. I am more inclined to, to talk about their motivation and see what comes out than necessarily do that, but it is a really beneficial shorthand if you just need something quickly. Um, inevitably, uh, we, uh, at the end of the day, we just want to listen, react, give the actors a chance to play, fail. If you happen to have time to explore and play and just catch catch things and see what happens, I really do believe that's a, a great way of working. Now, please ask me your questions because I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> I barely covered the surface. I could talk about this for days. In fact, you know, uh, we should be having a whole big masterclass. We barely touched the surface. Um, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of an insight into how to be an actors director, how to work with actors to discover their journey, to discover their moments together and hopefully get some magic.